There! 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 Hold on! Go! Look out! A 49-year-old man is found unconscious in his car by his daughter after being involved in a motor vehicle accident. Emergency medical services was activated immediately, and on arrival to the scene, the patient was intubated and brought to the nearest hospital. On arrival at the hospital, you notice significant craniofacial trauma, so you order a CT scan of his head, which reveals intracranial hemorrhage with midline shift. Which of the following anatomical structures of the brain is most likely to herniate after a traumatic injury like the one this patient has suffered? The correct answer is the temporal lobe. Traumatic brain injury often leads to increased intracranial pressure, causing structural swelling, crowding, and herniation from edematous tissue through fixed intracranial structures, such as the dura mater. The most common herniation syndrome is uncle herniation, involving the uncus of the temporal lobe. Other types of herniations include frontal lobe herniation, cerebellar tonsillar herniation, central transtentorial herniation, upward transtentorial herniation, and extracranial herniations. Uncle herniations can be spotted clinically because of the pressure it creates on the ipsilateral oculomotor nerve, resulting in ipsilateral ptosis, mydriasis, and ocular paresis. If the hernia progresses, the contralateral cruciferebri of the midbrain may be compressed, resulting in motor deficits ipsilateral, or on the same side, to the original lesion. This ipsilateral presentation is unique to uncle herniations since most other types of intracranial herniations create contralateral motor deficits. The other answer choices don't occur as frequently as uncle herniations, but have their own mechanisms of herniation and clinical presentation. For example, cerebellar herniations can involve the cerebellar tonsils through the foramen magnum, or the cerebellum upward through the tentorium cerebelli. Downward herniation of the cerebellum can compress the medulla and upper spinal cord, which can lead to a constellation of symptoms we call a Cushing reflex, which is hypertension, bradycardia, bradypnea, and respiratory arrest. Frontal lobe herniations can cross midline underneath the falx cerebri, in which case they are termed subfalcine herniation and typically manifest clinically as patients having small reactive pupils and paralysis of the contralateral leg. Of all the anatomical structures listed in the answer choices, the occipital lobe is the only choice that rarely herniates through fixed dural structures, except in cases of transcalvarial herniations, which occur through openings of the skull, typically the result of penetrating trauma to the head. If you like this case and enjoy medical cases like this one, check out Clinic, which is our new subscription-based web application, where each week we present you with new clinical encounters and multiple choice questions based on a variety of medical pathology from common disorders to the rarest diseases. Each week, your digital clinic is loaded with brand new cases, which are carefully crafted by our team members, exposing you to medical pathology you otherwise might not have had a chance to see or learn about at school or in your clinical practice. Subscribing to the Clinic app is also a great way to support this channel, allowing us to keep creating great medical educational videos, interactive software, and more medical cases like this one, for free on YouTube or at an affordable price on our website. But if you don't feel strongly about supporting us this way, that's okay. We still would like to show our appreciation to everyone who has continued to show their support for this channel over the years. And as a token of our appreciation, we've created a free collection of medical cases that you can access on our website. Just sign up for a free med school account by visiting the link in the description below. After you've successfully registered, you'll be redirected to the free collection landing page where you could add the collection to your account. And from here, you could immediately start testing your medical knowledge with the various clinical encounters found in this collection. You'll also have unlimited access to this collection, so you can repeat and attempt these cases as many times as you would like, forever.